Hey everyone, it's Mike from Orderflows here and welcome back to my channel. I'm glad you could join me for today's video. I'm going to be talking about, you know, picking the right chart for you. Okay, because this is a question I get a lot. You know, Mike, what's uh, the best chart for me to look at this market uh, using a footprint chart? And by this market, I mean, you know, either whether it's uh, S&Ps or NASDAQ or euro currency or bonds. Um, I'm going to discuss that. And before I jump in, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so you don't miss any new uploads, right? And if you find this video helpful, be sure to hit that like button for me and leave a comment sharing your biggest takeaway because, you know, I love hearing your feedback. And oftentimes it's from your feedback that I get ideas uh, for new videos. And, and this video sort of comes from that feedback. And let's go ahead and get started with today's topic, all right? Choosing the right chart or, you know, some people say the perfect chart. Well, there is no perfect chart for every trader there is a perfect chart for you though right and really what it comes down to is looking at the market in a way that's going to allow you to make sense of the order flow okay so for example um you know s and p's is a market that trades pretty normally okay now if it was a market like say ultra bonds okay this is ultra bonds on a four range chart it helps me understand what i'm looking at Okay, if I was looking at a time-based chart in a market like ultra bonds, right, it's going to be, it, it's possible, but there's going to be times where it's just like this here, where it's just basically trading the bid and the offer one tick above, maybe one tick below, you know, where it's just basically one price level here, here, you know, here, here, here. And it's going to be difficult. That's why I prefer on markets like interest rates to use a four range chart because now I'm seeing the market move based on price movements or in the sense rather bars printing based off of price movements um s and p's e minis rather trade nicely you get enough volatility in the bars to be able to um, make sense of the order flow you're looking at as opposed to sort of a flat line now the next step is depending on what you, exactly you're looking at in the order flow does in my opinion have some relevance to um taking advantage of the order flow right you want to take advantage of order flow as early as possible right if it's bullish order flow or bearish order flow okay because again there is in my opinion sort of a sell by date right imagine right you're looking at order flow and you see something bearish right you see like for example stack selling a balance you want to take advantage of that as soon as possible. Because the longer you, you know, wait for the bar to form or something, it may not be noticeable and you may have missed your opportunity. So, for example, right, if let's just really quickly here go to a five minute e mini chart, okay, and you'll notice today, yeah, there, were, there was, you know, some stacked imbalances, right, here if what you're looking for is stacked imbalances yeah you have one that came in here at 50.04 and a quarter right you don't see any stacked imbalances here and here and why not well it's because the market had plenty of time to sort of come in and fill that in okay so i mean look at this here so from basically going back to the cash open right this is 8 30 here you see only one stacked imbalance and it's this one stack buying a balance right here right there's nothing else now if i were to go on a shorter time frame say 30 seconds again this is dependent on what you want to analyze in the order flow whether it's stacked imbalances or anything else okay so here on a 30 second chart i got a nice trade here a nice stack selling a balance here All right basically from you know 50 10 down to 04 you know, there was another stack buying a balance here. This is that one that was at 04. You know, you had one here coming in around 99, right, before we took out that high. Um, yeah, nice little stack selling a balance here for a little move down. Nice buying a balance here for a move up. Okay, so you're seeing if if that's what you're focusing on, stack imbalances, what is usually what causes a stacked imbalance? Well, Usually what causes a stacked imbalance is a big order going through the market really quick, okay? Because, you know, someone's like, oh, you know, hey, like, you know, 
over here. Hey, buy me 700 E-minis at the market. Okay. People say, well, who would buy 700 at the market? But it doesn't matter. It's coming through really quick, right? The big traders, they will buy stuff at the market. Um, they'll usually, if the market's trading 99 and a half, they'll say, just pay, pay if it's trading 90 and a half, rather, they pay 91 and a half or, you know, 700. Their average price is probably going to be somewhere around 91.26 or something, which they're happy about because they know their order is going to have an influence on the market. Okay. So, that's why, you know, if you're looking at stacked imbalances, you want to be able to take advantage of them as soon as they happen, the sooner the better. Now people are going to say, well, why don't you go on like a shorter chart? I don't know. Um, I don't want to go down to a five second chart, but, you know, a 15 second chart. Well, you could in theory, um, but I think for most traders, that's, that's too fast. A lot of traders will, will probably panic or start to pull the, the trigger too much. Um, you know, you still got that imbalance here, got an imbalance here, got an imbalance here. Um, you know, sort of coming back to where we are now. Um, you got a little buying imbalance here, one here. So there's sort of a trade-off, right? Because you don't want to have too many signals. Right? You still want to give the market time to react rather than just a big order hitting the market, right? If you have a big order hitting the market, okay, so let's just go back here to a 30-second chart. If you have a big order hitting the market that's causing an imbalance in the market, right? So, for example, here or here, what you want to see is some sort of follow through. Okay, because one thing is to have a big order hit the market. Great. That gives you a sign that, hey, you know what? There's an aggressive trader here. But if there's no other aggressive traders coming in, like here, afterwards, like for the next this is a 30 second chart for the next one minute, minute and a half, two minutes, market's not going down. Really what you want to see is the big order come in, the big aggressive trader come in. And then you want to see some form of more aggression coming in. Okay. And you start to see it. Obviously, what's the first sign? Do you need more imbalances? Yeah, that's nice. But you want to see price go lower. Right. Over the next couple of bars. Yeah, technically it did go down here. You say, well, the market went down by one tick and then. It didn't. Well, yeah, if it's just holding in there, right, if it's coming back to where that aggressive selling was and it's just holding, chances are it's not going to do well. Obviously, another um, sign that I'm always looking for is what's happening. You know, are we going inside or what? Right, like here, this one went inside. This one went inside. This one just barely missed it. But, you know, really what you want to see is some sort of follow through in the market. Okay. So again, if you were to look at an eight range chart, on e minis, you know, I used to, I used to use eight range charts a lot. People say, well, why don't I use it now? It's because again, I've sort of changed my outlook of the market as we're trading at higher prices. It's a nice stack selling balance. Okay, next bar obviously lower. Again, here's a nice stack selling balance. Next bar one tick lower. Then you pull right back up into that imbalance. Right, the, in my opinion, the best imbalances don't get traded back into immediately. And if you're looking for some sort of confirmation, right, if it does pull back, it should hold. Here it holds. Here it holds. Here it holds. It doesn't trade back into. Here it doesn't hold. It gets on the other side of it pretty quick. Okay. So again, looking at charts, trading is a journey, right? It's a personal journey, actually. And finding the right chart type takes time, right? I see people, you know, trading NASDAQ, right? They, they use a 20 range chart. Okay, fine. That, that works for them. Me, if I look at NASDAQ, MNQ, right? I got a 15 second chart here, okay? Because I know I could see what's happening. Now, the problem, you know, I don't, honestly, I don't spend a lot of time trading NASDAQ. I do look at it occasionally. Um, just moves a little bit too fast for me. I, I prefer markets that aren't jumping around. And but the problem is a lot of traders, right? They see people post stuff on chat groups and things like that on Facebook, Instagram, say Instagram, but Facebook. And oh yeah, I caught this big run in the Nasdaq. Well, they're a different type of trader than maybe you are. So you got to understand the type of trader you are, 
and what it is you're going to be looking at in the market. So for example, if, where's my chart here, right? If I were to look at a five minute chart, can I look at stacked imbalances? Well, of course I can. It doesn't mean I can't look at certain things, but I'll probably focus on different aspects of the order flow. And order flow is very robust. Okay, you got all the you got delta numbers to look at. You got obviously stacked imbalances. You got volumes in the bar. If I was looking at a longer time frame chart, like a five minute chart, um, I wouldn't expect to see a lot of imbalances necessarily because you have five minutes to sort of come back in, fill in volumes like here, right? This on the breakout right before that, we had a nice stacked buying imbalance coming in here. It's not here on a five minute chart. This one is still here. And even here, right, we had these stacked selling imbalances up in here, it's not here anymore. Just because the market had plenty of time to fill it in doesn't mean that there's no stacked imbalances. Well, there was on a shorter time frame, but on a longer time frame, you're going to focus on different aspects of the order flow. Okay, so that video, you know, the longer time frame video order flow will probably be another video in the future because um, I do get a lot of questions. You know, people ask me, I am a swing trader. I trade you know, a five minute chart or a 15 minute chart, um, how can I use order flow? Well, you can, even though I say that order flow, you know, is best used as fresh as possible. There are certain things that are like these breadcrumbs, you will, left in the market that you can see on a footprint chart pretty clearly. And I'll make a video on that uh, in the near future. All right. So be sure to subscribe to the channel so you'll get the notification for when I do create that video. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be sure to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And again, you know, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye-bye.